Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Bandwidth for Ham Nation is provided by Cashfly at C A C H E F L Y dot com. Hi, this is Leo Laporte, and if you'd like to help us design our new website, I invite you to visit twit.to slash navtest. We've got eight quick questions we'd like to ask you that will help us make the navigation easier to use. That's twit.to slash navtest. Thanks a lot. This episode of Ham Nation is brought to you by Harry's. For guys who want a great shave experience for a fraction of what you're paying now, go to harrys.com. And just in time for the gift season for new and existing customers, get $5 off the limited edition Winter Winston set by entering the code HAMNATIONHOLIDAY at checkout. And by ICOM. For more information, visit ICOMAmerica.com slash HAMNATION. And by DX Engineering. DX Engineering offers practically everything you need to outfit your shack, plus the fastest shipping in the industry. In-stock items ship the same day, Monday through Friday until 10 p.m. Eastern. For more information, visit DXEngineering.com slash HAMNATION. This is Ham Nation, episode number 176, December 10th, 2014. Bob sets up his 1962 ICO. Hello, everybody. It's me, Bob Heil, K9EID. Uh, just in case you forgot my call or anything, I've been <laughs> gone for so long, and you're you're looking and tuned in to the great program from the twit network ham nation and yeah it's all about ham radio and making friends and uh, having all kinds of funds with electronic and funds things <laughs> and boy we got some things tonight but uh everybody's on uh, on tap here uh gordo down in costa mesa how are you well, I am fine, and thanks to the hams last week that put up with the crackles, they just thought it was HF noise, but Dave, W6DVE, came over and said, wait a minute, we'll figure this out. So, sorry, no more crackle, everyone. You'll hear me loud and clear. And um, yeah. we're going to talk uh, tonight all about the 10-meter uh, contest. But before we do, those of you that are taking part at the um, Limark, uh, holiday party have fun without us that party is tonight and ham university coming up uh is uh, uh coming up in uh, january 4th now we're off for a couple of weeks but uh ham radio you uh have a great time followed by jan 16 and 17 in florida fort myers their big get together and bob we should go to puerto rico january 24th and 25th angel says they're going to roll out all of the uh, stops for that, but unfortunately, I'll be at Quartz Fest. But look at this. For those of you looking for a nice gift to give away uh, during the holiday season, thanks to Craig and Holly, happy birthday, 50 years, the Ham Radio 5 Cent Stamp. This is a wonderful collector's item, and uh, if you'd like to learn more about that, uh, simply uh, go to uh, their uh, website, uh, which is hamcrazy.com, and see all the neat gifts you can give a deserving ham. Bob, back to you. Yeah, that's a really cool thing, and uh, uh, those are nice people from uh, from out here in the Midwest. Uh, I, uh, I, I want to say hello to my great friend, and I think he's got a buddy with him tonight, our good old smoke and solder, George. George, how are you tonight? Hi, Bob. Doing fine. Good to have you back. Uh, yeah, Ray's been in town here for a couple of days, and he brought some nice Christmas toys with him. Uh, we've been having a blast here. Say hello, Ray. Hey, everybody. And George, I'm slipping coal in your stocking. Oh, please don't. Uh, this is serial number zero of uh, 150? 140. 140. Okay, so uh, I, I guess this is the first one in the United States so far, and boy, I, I got to say, a nice radio. Well, really thank you. Nice radio. It's it's been fun to play with it here and uh, back at the Ham Shack as well. Yeah, cool. All right, back to you, Bob. Uh, George, there, George is the problem. I don't see a bow on that with your name tag on. Did you take that off? 
No. Um, <laughs> while he was out, though, a while ago, I super glued the legs down to the table here. So he's going to have to get this eight-foot table out the door if he's taking this. Okay. Yeah, you took that from uh, John QDA and uh, the guys on uh, 3847 last night. So at least we, we got something accomplished there to uh, figure out how to keep that. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's great. We'll come back to you in just a minute. And we go down to see Don. Don, how are you, man? Are you okay? Yeah, I'm awesome, Bob. It's good to have you back. Hey, I want to say thanks to the folks at the Westchester Emergency Communications Association. They had me as a Skype guest Monday night at their uh, club meeting, so apparently it was a slow month for them. But uh, they, they had me nonetheless, and, and we had a great time. And, uh, and Gordo, real quick, I, I wanted to add another ham fest to your list. I forgot to give this to you. The Pearl River County Amateur Radio Club, which is my home club, in Poplarville, Mississippi, will have their ham fest and VE session coming up. Uh, this Saturday, as a matter of fact, the 13th, it's in Poplarville, Mississippi, um, kind of in between Jackson and uh, Biloxi. Um, Poplarville is a neat little town mm. in That's Pearl a... River County, uh, but you'll find that you can find them on Facebook, Pearl River County Amateur Radio Club. And uh, and so we're having our ham fest coming up this Saturday. So I'm looking forward to that, Bob. Okay. All right. Well, uh we, we've got so much to do tonight, and I, I got a couple of things I got to tell you about, and this is a real weirdy. I got a thing on an email. I hope some of you did, and it's from Radio Shack. I, I, I thought they were having hard times, but they have got the coolest thing, and I want you all to look at this. Go look it up on their website. It's called Smart Toys and Tech, and it's all these little modules and these modules are like a CW key, a transistor, a speaker, there are, and you, you just plug them together. And why I mention this, there are many of us that have uh, grandchildren, our children, and it's going to get them into electronics. It's, it's, it's how I started into this thing is playing around with parts and hooking it all together. But it's so much easier. Check that out. I just thought it was worth a mention because we're constantly trying to get people to build things and so on. And speaking of building things, you remember... Oh, here, some months ago, George and I had a project for a couple of weeks about an oscilloscope uh, sampler that you could put in your line and put any kind of oscilloscope, as you see behind me, uh, because there's, there's a lot of them. I've been to a couple of ham fests lately. My gosh, you can pick them up for very little or nothing. They are the backbone of your amateur radio station. Believe me, it'll tell you a lot of things, but you need to figure out how to sample it. Well, I got this wonderful array of pictures from Dave Elliott. And let's see, Dave's call. Uh, is N5EKW. And uh, George, Gordo, Don, all of us, check this out. Uh, run those by, Brian. Check this out. Look at the nice job he did. Wow. This yeah. is wonderful. And he's a relatively new ham, uh, as I understand. Do that next one. Go ahead, Brian. And uh, run the next one real quick. We'll go through these. I, I look at that. Nice work. What do you think, George? How you like that solder he did? That was cool, huh? Oh yeah. Look at Excellent that. Excellent job. Yeah, that's. Uh, yeah. Uh, you know, when he when he hooks that thing up to the scope, that's just gonna uh, open a whole new world to him right there. When he can look at that modulation and see what's going on. Yeah, absolutely. But look what else he does to it. And this is something we didn't talk about. You can put your frequency counter in it, too, and see exactly where you are. Now, that's really cool. Thanks, Brian, for running those. David, thanks for sharing that with us. We're very excited about all the things that you're doing. And uh, you can learn it right here on Ham Nation. Look at that nice station. So uh, congratulations. Keep building. Keep the soldering iron hot. That's, <laughs> that's where it's at. At least that's where it's at for me. And uh, we'll, we'll come back in a while. We got some more things. I, I'm so thrilled. I got my ICO station going. I've been using it this past week or so. I've been home. We're going to show you tonight how to hook it up. I got a, about 10 minutes, 12 minutes, whatever it is, video. And uh, I've been asked by a lot of guys to how do you hook all this old stuff up where well, you're going to see it it's it's going to turn out really well so we'll do that down the line right now we're headed back to california and gordo's got 
lots of nice uh, shots for us. Gordo, take her away. All right. Uh, thank you, Bob. And let's jump into the 10 meter contest starting this weekend. So, Brian, if you'll go ahead and roll it, the 10 meter contest for those of you with just the technician class license is a powerful way to uh, work all continents and literally work the world, certainly all of the country. Your voice privileges technician class operators is 28. 300 to 28,500. And uh, once you tune in 28,300 to 500, you're going to find that uh, between uh, 28,200 and 300 are these. Those are beacons. And if you tune in the beacon band and hear all this activity going on, then you know that the 10 meter band is open. Hear that? Those are beacons, so I hope everybody will tune in below 300 and listen to the beacons. If you hear beacons, that means you're ready to roll. And on that wonderful scope that uh, Ray's got, you're going to see all sorts of activity between 28, 200 to 300. That means the band is open. And this weekend for the 10-meter contest, I bet the band will indeed be open because we've had great ionospheric conditions that cause radio waves on 10 to refract off and come back down. And sometimes they'll take a double hop or sometimes they'll go up to the F layer and you'll get coast to coast DX. And those of you on the East Coast, like the Great South Bay amateur radio team uh, to Tango Victor and his crew, you'll be working Europe on the 10 meter band. So with your scope, tuned in, and you see this kind of activity below 300, that means the band is open. Those are beacons you are hearing that come in 24 hours a day. And um, this weekend, we're looking for contacts on the West Coast after we dry out from much needed rain to Hawaii. Uh, those of you in the Midwest, you can work both directions. And those of you on the East Coast, wow, Europe working north and south, and those of you down in Texas, uh, Don's land, you can work either way. Plenty of skywaves this weekend on 10 meters. So fill up that logbook and literally work the country or work the world. Now, you don't need a huge antenna. Whether it's vertical or horizontal makes no difference to skywaves. And on the 10 meter band, it only needs to be eight and a half feet per side. Now, oh, that's a little short, Jim in 6JF, but he says, wait a minute, wait a minute. He'll drop that on the ground. He'll attach some uh, guy lines, non-conductive. That's the MFJ. That's a wonderful stainless steel telescopic whip. He'll put it up eight feet, six inches. And uh, once he's got it up in the air, he'll take a look on the MFJ SWR analyzer, which every ham should have one of those analyzers. You'll see that he's got almost no coil uh, working on the 10 meter band. He'll spread out the ground radials eight and a half feet in four different directions and he's on the air. But wait a minute, you might wanna try hoisting up a dipole on 10. We talked about this a couple of weeks ago, eight and a half feet per side. You can put it up on the side of a tower. You can put it up any way you want to. But uh, when you make the dipole eight feet, six inches, take some extra wraps of your uh, line of the um, conductor and wrap it back on itself. It won't see itself until you may need to do something to it. Oh, look at that, 28,600, too short. Well, how do you make a 10 meter wire antenna longer? No problem. Just go back to where you had the wire bunched up, pull down about an inch or two. One inch is good for about 100 kilohertz. So we'll take a few more wraps off. Uh, just have it dangling down there. And now let's take a look at 28400. Bango, you're right on the nose. So that's the way you get 10 meters to uh, crank just by a little bit of adjustment of that dipole antenna. Look at that SWR. Look at that feed point impedance. Just right about 50 ohms. Your radio is going to be very happy. Now, we had a problem with this beam. It was fine for some time, and then it was not fine for others. We couldn't figure out what the heck was going on. It's a 10-meter antenna. So we looked up at the feed point, <laughs> and uh, there was a uh, seagull uh, sitting on the feed point. 
So uh, make sure no one's on your feed point. For those of you that have come to ham radio, as I originally did back in the 50s and 60s from uh, Class A, uh, UHF CB radio when it was uh, uh, not class D but class A if you have a 27 megahertz antenna your radio likely an ICOM radio we hope will do just fine on that 27 megahertz antenna with maybe a little bit of tweaking so if you got an old CB antenna you're good to go have a headset because you may need it for all the QRN and QRM that's going to be coming this weekend and it'll help you dig out the weak ones that's the Heil headset, of course. And uh, tune in 28300 to 28500. But be careful. Don't go much above 28496 because you'll slop out of the band. So uh, 283 to 285, you're right on the upper edge here, but you'll be in good shape. Um, I like 28400. And here you see the ICOM 9100, the same radio that we're going to take to Quartz Fest again in third week of January. We're going to be using that radio this weekend in the field to have fun on 10 meters. And uh, there you see the headphones in there. And I would expect this weekend, just looking at the prop charts, that we're going to work nearly all states, at least probably 35 or 40. Uh, on the 10 meter band without much trouble at all, hopefully uh, up to the north and to the south. So any kind of an antenna, if you got an old CB antenna, light it up on the 10 meter band and uh, have fun. 28400 is about where we're going to hang out. And uh, again, if you decide to build your own antenna, one wire on the left side, uh, about eight feet, six inches, one on the right side, eight feet, six inches, Hoist it up on a tree, get that uh, funny looking ballon that we made out of uh, wrapping coax uh, up as high as possible. Uh, pull it up on uh, the tree branch and believe it or not, even this low of elevation, you are going to work all over on 10 meters. So all of you in the chat room and those viewing and listening come up this weekend for the ARRL 10 meter contest and we wish you a sunset like this as you work dx on 10 meters so i'll be listening for you around 28 400 or a little bit high or a little bit low on 10 see you this weekend on the air bob back to you all right. Yeah, it's really fun. And that 10 meters is great. One thing I did on 10 years ago when it was really hopping, uh, I had a PDL2. That was a quad for CB. And Avanti built me one of those, but it was cut to 10 meters. And uh, then later on, I actually took one and cut it down about six or eight inches. Man, what an antenna. Uh, <laughs> it, was, it was terrific. Uh, that's something you guys might want to look around and find an old PDL too. Well, we're off to uh, talk to Don. I think he's got something. I, I think it's got to do uh, with uh, 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 one of these. I think so. Don, take her away. What about Harry's? Yeah, and with looking sharp and and actually filling up some empty spots on your Christmas gift list. You got some some guys that are impossible to to buy for the guy in your life who maybe has everything. It, it man, the the stress. I haven't even begun. I can barely spell Christmas gift, much less try to find the time to buy anything for anyone, including my long suffering wife. Sadly enough, it's very frustrating and takes up too much time. Well, you get online and you go to Harry's.com, and uh, they will help you out. Now, this is this is the one that I've been using right here. Look at this. This is the Winston. Okay, it's this nice, it's a uh, polished uh, metal, it's it's gorgeous. Well, right now at Harry's, they have, and Bob or Gordon, you probably have one of these in your hand, just like I have in mine. It's the limited edition Winter Winston set, and it's it's an inexpensive gift for what you get. Uh, somebody show that thing, or I can I can show you mine right here. Either way, yeah, thirty dollars. Just I love it. I love you, mine, you, and uh, as dollars. you can see, uh, it does. Uh, fabulous job limited right. edition very nice here's here's the box it comes in i mean it comes like this and in fact it even comes gift wrapped for you and shipping is free that's the cool thing you get the shave gel you get three blades and you get the limited edition it, it comes in two colors either charcoal gray or ice blue now this is the gray 
right here. It looks really, really nice. I mean, it's, it's almost black, but you can tell it's not quite black, but it's the same metal as the Winston that I have, the, the chroma that I have. Now, the the ice blue, oh my lord, it is a gorgeous color. Like I said, it comes wrapped. It's ready to go. It's ready to just dazzle whoever it is that you give it. Now, we've all been using Harry's for a while now, and and I, I got to tell you, I'm, I'm an electric shaver guy. I, I really am, but I'm I'm loving this. I, I see it as, as something really cool that I get to do and kind of pamper myself a little bit. You get three high-quality blades, the foaming shave gel or the shaving cream, and the price, you can't beat it. Harry's cost half as much as the razors at the store, like your Gillette Fusion, all those other razors that aren't, I mean, they're, they're no better than Harry's and probably not, not, the, uh, not the quality that Harry's is. They also have a new aftershave moisturizer, protects, hydrates my skin. And the thing I like about it is I'm a, I like to wear a cologne, so I like to smell good. And <laughs> you, you get well, I do. You got to kind of watch what you wear because you you start you start putting too many too many scents together, and they all start clashing. That's what I'm getting to. This everything that Harry's has, it's very neutral, and it doesn't clash with whatever it is that you like to smell like. Okay, you call me names. I don't care what you call me. I, I like to be comfortable on my own skin, and that helps me do that. And and Harry's doesn't clash with the stuff that the oh, old look. Oh, there you make a mess. Go right ahead, just. Make a mess. Look at you. We can't take you anywhere, can we? They make their own razors. They have their own factory in Germany. Uh, they're amazing. They engineer them for sharpness and high performance. You will never have to have another dull blade because they make and ship their own blades. Harry's is an extremely efficient company. They give us factory direct pricing. As a holiday offer, Harry's is gifting all of our fans $5 off the limited edition winter Winston set. So that means you get it for $25 and not $30. Even if you're an already loyal Harry's user. You get $5 off. It's a Christmas gift. You get the razor, three quality blades, a tube of the foaming shave gel or the shave cream, and free shipping for just $25. Bucks. Free shipping ends December 10th, which, uh, what is it? That's uh, today. So you got to do it tonight. Got to get on there tonight. Harry's.com. Get $5 off the limited edition winter Winston set with code Ham Nation Holiday. All new and existing customers, you get $5 off your purchase with the code Ham Nation Holiday. Harry's, H A R R Y S dot com. Harry's dot com. Enter code Ham Nation Holiday at checkout. And I, I'm not exactly sure why they do this, but they have a woolly mammoth on the box. And, and that's just worth the price of admission to me. There's just something about a shave company whose logo is a woolly mammoth. Harry's, a shave good enough to gift, and we thank them for their support of Ham Nation. So, Harry's, thank you very much. Just the coolest. The coolest company. Now, let's uh, let's go see what the news of the week is with Amateur Radio Newsline, shall we? From Amateur Radio Newsline Report number 1,947, these are the Ham Nation headlines for Wednesday, December 10th, 2014. Japan has successfully launched its round-trip Hayabusa 2 asteroid sample return mission with a pair of Amateur Radio payloads along for the ride. The mission was carried into space on December 3rd. The primary payload is the Hayabusa 2 spacecraft on the first leg of its exploration and recovery journey to asteroid 1999 JU-3. Along for the ride into the final frontier are two amateur radio satellites named Xi'an-2 and Artsat-2 Dispatch. His controllers say that they are seeking the assistance from HAMS here on Earth as part of a global monitoring system that it calls a Cooperative Diversity Communications Experiment. This effort will try to intercept signals from the spacecraft by properly equipped radio amateurs around the world, in addition to those heard and recorded at the Mission Control Center located in Tokyo, Japan. The hope is to reconstruct the original data that's transmitted from the spacecraft. That's Bill Pasternak, WA6ITF, reporting. Each ham radio satellite has its own website, and you'll find these links and much more in the full edition of this week's Amateur Radio Newsline Report. Have you always wanted to go on an exotic D expedition but just can't quite swing the real thing? Well, Jim Davis, W2JKD, tells us how you can be there from the comfort of your own home. Well, almost. F5CWU reports that a slideshow covering the 2014 Tromelin Island FT4TA operation is now available for viewing on the World Wide Web. The show is made up from the selected photos out of thousands that were taken beginning with the approach by air to the island. A video of the expedition is being edited and will hopefully be available in early 2015. One of these days. The QRZ.com call sign lookup and general ham radio discussion website has announced its new subscriber rewards program. 
Subscriber Rewards is their way of saying thanks to subscribers upon whose support they depend to keep the site running. Every Wednesday, QRZ will choose a subscriber to win a free prize. All current QRZ subscribers are eligible regardless of their subscription plan. If your call sign page has a QRZ subscriber badge, then you're eligible to win. QRZ.com will announce each week's new winner on its homepage in the Ham Radio News Forum. They'll also keep you posted on Facebook and Twitter. SpinSat was successfully deployed from the International Space Station on the afternoon of Friday, November 28th. SpinSat is a 56-centimeter sphere weighing 57 kilograms that has 12 electronically controlled solid propellant thrusters spread in pairs throughout the surface of the satellite. They will be fired in pairs to spin the spacecraft. SpinSat's primary mission will be to calibrate the space surveillance network. Lasers will be fired at SpinSat from the ground. The light reflected back will be measured to determine where in time and space the satellite is passing overhead. SpinSat will also model the density of the atmosphere. The IARU Satellite Frequency Coordination Panel reports that SpinSat carries a 2-watt RF output, 9600 bit per second AX.25 packet radio store to forward the system on 437.230 MHz. With just primary batteries for power and only 4.8 grams of fuel, the spin-up phase may last between three to six months. And finally this week, graphene is being touted by some in the scientific world as the new steel of the 21st century. Stephen Kinford, N8WB, has more. Introduced to the world about a decade ago, graphene is a multi-layered material that is somewhere between 10 and 100 nanometers thick. This makes the material more like a very thin sheet of carbon. As a matter of fact, the material is so thin that it appears to be more like a sheet of paper but thinner. But even at that extreme thinness, graphene can hold weights that are a hundred times heavier than steel. And graphene is an extremely good conductor of both heat and electricity. But the most important aspect found so far is that graphene can dissipate huge amounts of energy. What might this mean to those involved in emergency response work? Many things including something as simple as dropping a handheld radio onto concrete and it not even being scratched. More important that it continues to work as if nothing at all has happened. And that's all from the Amateur Radio Newsline, your independent source for amateur radio news brought to you each and every week for over 35 years and counting at www.arnewsline.org. For Bill Pasternak, wa 6 <coughs> Jim Davis, W2JKD, and Stephen Kenford, N8WB, I'm Don Wilbanks, AE5DW73. We'll see you next time here on Ham Nation. <laughs> well, boys and girls, it's my favorite time of the year again. That's right, time for the Santa Watch Net. That's right, Santa will be making his rounds, and once again, for the fourth year in a row, the gang at the Dew Drop In will be watching the radar. Join the Santa Watch Net starting at 1800 hours Eastern Time. Oh, my little elf Dave in 3NTV will be calling the net and keeping track of old Santa's location. And like last year, Santa has a radio in his sleigh and he may chat with the kids again. Oh, bring all the little ones and get them checked in. Third party traffic, of course, always on the nice list. Once again, the Santa Watch Net, Christmas Eve, 1800 hours Eastern on the Do Drop In Echo Link Conference Server, number 355. 800. Oh, oh, oh. Merry Christmas from me, Santa, and of course, my little elves at the Do Drop In. <laughs> oh, that's going to be so much fun. I can't wait for that. George, what do we got for smoke and solder this week? Well, uh, before I get into that, let me just say Santa sounds like he's got balls, man. I swear. That's uh... <laughs> one, one, one right here. Look, there it is. Just one. Just yeah, one, right okay. Yeah, just All one, right. One. <laughs> well, you know, the last, um, oh, I don't know, we've been talking about this for over a month now. I built an antenna switcher uh, using an Arduino and a servo. Ray, you saw that earlier. I showed it to yeah, you. Yeah, I did. That actually has been pretty fun to play around with. Yeah, it has. And anyway, you know, part of that project, I wanted to build an Arduino uh, scale down so it only had as few parts as possible on it. And I call it the cheap Arduino. And... Uh, I found out some interesting things about it, but one of the things I had to do is make a PC board for it. So I've I've shown you between here and Amateur Logic both uh, the schematic for what you needed and also the PC board layout. And I finally got around to um, getting it back and, and put it all together. But what I want to show you here is 
the, the board, rather than try to draw it out with a Sharpie, I don't think I could have done that. So I want to use a PC board house. Now, you know, if you've got uh, something a little more complicated or if you want to make uh, several boards, you might want to No, a square won't help, Ray. No. That wouldn't help the Sharpie? <laughs> no, that wouldn't help. Um, you, you know, you might want to use a board house. You know, that's a place that you can send your artwork to and they'll make a PC board for you. So this time around, I had never used Express PCB before, and you've seen me use their uh, schematic and uh, PC board programs before. I thought I uh, would go through the process and, and use Express PCB and uh, just see how easy it was. If you remember recently, I was talking about building a scaled-down Arduino Uno to use with my servo-controlled antenna switcher. I titled it the Cheap Arduino because it was getting by with the least number of parts that I could to make a typical Arduino project. It's essentially an ATmega 328p microcontroller along with the parts necessary to build a 5 volt regulated power supply and an oscillator. Now this time we're going to look at putting it on a PC board. And here it is, the Cheap Arduino PC board. This is laid out with Express PCB the software that you can get for free at ExpressPCB.com. And I wanted to go as cheap as I could with it, so I ordered the mini board service, which is for a 3.8 inch by 3.5 inch PC board. And you can see here I laid out my board twice on this size of area, so I can build two cheap Arduinos from a single PC board. When you order the mini board service, you get three PC boards, so that means I'm going to be able to get six cheap Arduinos with this order. Now let's dissect it a little bit. Here's just the layout for the components that we'll need. U1, of course, is our microcontroller. Uh, the J's that are around the outside edge here are our jumpers. Right here is the crystal and the capacitors that go with it. Over here is our 5-volt regulator and the capacitors that go with it. Our reset switch and the resistor that goes with it. And all these components are just on here twice. Now let's look at the PC board layers. This is the bottom layer of the board. The square pad right here indicates pin 1 on our microcontroller chip. And you can see I've just laid out the wires going to where they should on everything on the board. Over here on the right hand side you'll see I made just a little proto area here, sort of like a strip board, where I can add additional components and build small projects. This will be perfect for my antenna servo controller. And I put holes around the outside here so I can mount the board. Now it wasn't possible to get all the wires on a single side of the board. I tried my best but just wasn't going to happen and that's typically the case when you get into a more complex project. This is just the bottom layer of the board that we're seeing right here, and most everything is connected there. You can see there's a, a pin here on the chip that's not, a few down here, and the switch is not connected because I couldn't do it without crossing over some of the other connections here. And here's the top layer. So essentially, I've only got four traces on the top layer here, and the rest of the area here is just the ground plane, which... It doesn't cost anything extra and you might as well use. You can see these holes here that are connected to the ground plane. Those are all ground connections and that's typically how you would use it. You do it like this rather than make it solid so then it'll be a little bit easier to solder. And you can see I put text on here to indicate the different pins and such. That's because I didn't want to spend the extra money to have a silk screen and solder mask on this board. It was going to be expensive enough already. So when we're looking at everything, here's what we've got. But what I'm actually going to have printed won't have the silk screen on it. Once we've got our board layout to where we think it's perfected, we can check how much it's going to cost. If we go up here and compute board cost, select your country and state, two layer or four layer board, this will be a two layer, then choose a service that you want. I'm choosing the mini board service here because it was going to be the most economical for this project. And it tells me that I get a very high quality double sided board without the green solder mask coating or the white component outlines and text. Three boards are going to cost me $51. If I want to get 
the silk screen and the solder mask on it, I can get the same thing right here, but that's going to cost me $75. And I didn't feel like it was worth an extra $24, especially on the budget of this project. So I just went with the standard mini board service. And you can choose your shipping method here. I'm going to choose the cheapest one, second day air. $51 is what this is going to cost me plus shipping. When you're ready to order, you just go up here, order boards via the internet, and you'll go through and answer a few questions and your order will be processed. You can also generate a plot file for a manual order in case you can't or don't want to use the internet for ordering. And before you order, you should update the pricing file here and it'll prompt you to do that if they're out of date so you'll be getting the most up-to-date prices. So now I've ordered my boards and they've come in. Here's what we got. The top side of the board, and I'm going to try to angle it where the camera will catch it better. You can see all my lettering turned out okay. And I've got pin 1 marked there for the chip, as well as all my connectors and my power supply input. So even without the silk screen, I can still just look at it without having to refer to the schematic and get a pretty good idea of how things mount on it. Let's look at the bottom side, and it turned out pretty nice too. Now, these little traces right here, I would have had a hard time drawing those with a Sharpie. So, <laughs> uh, this is probably the better route to go, using Express PCB. There are other methods you could use at home that uh, would probably work with this. They're just a little finicky. Not a bad board. The chip, the regulator push button switch, our connectors, and our proto area here so that we can build onto it and add small components. So this ought to be pretty handy for building little Arduino based projects. And I just take the single board and rip it down the middle here and I've got two PC boards for the price of one. <laughs> Yes, I was just explaining to Ray that these are, are plated through holes on here. I think, board. I think we can do better next time uh, with the Sharpie. I'm telling you, Ray, <laughs> even the level and the square are not going to help. They're, well, they're just yeah. not. Well, you got to remember where I started in this industry. Oh, yeah, with uh, with, with MFJ. Yeah. So we can build this thing. Well, yeah. And I bet Don has some of that Cajun ingenuity to bring up from Picuna help. He probably Oh, man, does. you know I do. He's probably got the hot sauce to burn the boards with. I do. <laughs> well, uh, it, it's a fun project, and, and better than that, it even works. You know, I tested them out, and I found out an interesting thing. Since I don't have as many components on here, this thing draws about half the current of a regular Arduino, which would make it perfect for battery-powered projects. So uh, that, that's kind of a little bonus I wasn't counting on. But I'm going to show more of this uh, and uh, the actual testing of it uh, on the next Amateur Logic, which we'll be shooting this weekend. Uh, Tommy should be back in town, and we'll be doing that. But, um, you know, fun project. Where's the CD-ROM on it? The CD, there's no CD-ROM on an Arduino. You did go cheapo. Well, I, yes, I, I went as cheapo <laughs> as possible. <laughs> okay, well, uh, right now, let's have a message from the people who raise wearing their shirt. Looking for a new rig that combines time-honored analog functionality with the ability to give you safe, hands-free operation via optional Bluetooth module? Check out ICOM's new IC2730A. This dual-band analog-only mobile has a great interface and enhanced radio features for your next 2-meter, 70-centimeter adventure. ICOM's IC2730A is built military tough and has a large high contrast display, approximately one and a half times larger than its predecessor, the IC2720H. It's got a white backlight for easy readability and independent band controls. Practical 2730A features include wide frequency coverage, VHF, VHF, and UHF, UHF simultaneous receive capability, 50 watts output power on VHF and UHF bands, and 1,050. 52 memory channels. You can wow. combine the IC2730's classic analog functionality with optional Bluetooth compatibility. For hands-free and remote control operation, install the optional VS3 Bluetooth headset and UT133 Bluetooth unit. Wirelessly control the radio with three programmable buttons plus a push-to-talk button. 
Make sure you visit icomamerica.com slash amateur for more information on the IC2730A dual bander and other great ICOM amateur radio rigs. Radio rigs. Well, as of today, well, as still of today, have F- yeah. uh, they, they haven't approved it yet, but it's expected soon. Yes, it is. Okay, and it'll be but, on the market once approved. Yes, but we've had a lot of fun playing with it over the last two days. We have, and uh, I, I think we learned some, well, we think we learned some things. We don't have a manual for it yet, so we saw a lot of... A lot of things in the menus there that if they do what they we think they do. Yeah, but there again, we're going to be dreaming tonight wondering, was it the 7850 that had that function or, or the or, yeah. 2730? So. Yeah, but we've really had a big time with it. Well, you know, we uh, Ray likes to give away stuff. And uh, while he's not giving me this rig right here, he is going to give you something, not not this rig, but, uh, you know, there's a, a drawing every week at ICOM. You can enter and win after each episode of Ham Nation. Go to icomamerica.com slash Ham Nation. Throw your name in the hat, and you could win some great swag prizes from ICOM. But not only that, you'll also be registered automatically to uh, be entered into the grand prize drawing for the month. And each month, it's a new radio. And Ray, what's the December grand prize going to be? The December grand prize will be the 2730. The one sitting right here on the table with us right now. Not quite this particular Not one. Not this particular one. Okay. And that's uh, military tough construction, large high, high contrast display, 50 watts on VHF and UHF. Don't laugh at me. I know I screwed up. <laughs> Plus optional Bluetooth compatibility for hands-free and remote operation. And we even played with that a little bit today, too. Now, uh, that's the December grand prize. And, of course, you know, it's got to be FCC approved before it ships out. Yes. But uh, So go, go register to win, you know. Um, somebody's going to win these prizes, and you really should be entering. Your chances are pretty good. IcomAmerica.com slash Ham Nation. Go there after this episode and each episode of Ham Nation and register to win. And, you know, um, for the last several weeks, I've had some towers behind me back here. This week, I, I couldn't help it. I had to put that 7850 up here. That's a really big radio, but not quite as big as the wall behind me, but... Uh, still pretty nice radio, but back to those towers. You know, last week I asked a question. Uh, we had KGO's towers on there, and I, I asked, what does KGO stand for? And I got a lot of good answers on that one, and, uh, hey, they were all correct, but only one person could win. So in the random drawing, I drew K Hartman, K8GZ, and K said, KGO was built by General Electric Company in Oakland, California, where they had a transformer manufacturing facility. The letter K, of course, designates it's a United States station on the west side of the Mississippi River. The G stands for General Electric, and the O stands for Oakland. So congratulations, K. We're going to be shipping you out this MFJ 24-hour clock, and uh, we'll get that out to you uh, within the next week. And for next week, uh, well, we got another good prize here. It's a Heil PR-22, just like the one Ray is talking in over there. Does it make me sound like Don? It makes you sound better than Don. But uh, anyway, comes with a... Uh, <laughs> comes with a, a nice carrying case. Uh, a couple of different um, windscreens in here, so if you don't like silver... You can, you can go bling with it gold. Up. Yep, you can have it match your uh, 7850. Oh, wow. Or you can do it in black. Wow. So, uh, great microphone here, Bob, and we appreciate Hall Sound giving us this. Now, if I can find where my question was. And I, I love the Sarah touch because she added that to his microphones. She's the one who came up with that. With the packing case? Yes. At least that's what he tells me when she's around. Well, that, that's that's what how a wise man does, Ray. Uh, so the question, you know, I really didn't come up with one. So I, now that I'm looking at my notes here, so let's see. Off the cuff, we need a good question. Um, I tell you what, we're going to think about that. And why don't you folks in the chat room give me some questions that um, people can answer if they want to win this high PR twenty two, and we'll tell you in the chat room section what the actual question is. And, of course, you're going to send that email 
to uh, hamnationcontest at gmail.com. But we'll have the question for you. We're going to pick the best one out of the chat room here. So uh, I guess, you know, Bob, you've got you, you've been up to something special here lately. We talked about it last night on the air. Hmm. Yep, I have been working a long time on this. Um, but only until recently when uh, uh, I, I found the VFO with, with Phil, AI4DQ, he's got lots of stuff. This is a 1962 ICO. And um, this is a modulator. It's really a hi-fi amp. They used to build a lot of hi-fi equipment. But I had to put it all together. And so many of you have asked me, how do you hook all this stuff up? Well, we're going to show you. So roll that video, Brian, and here we go with the 720 project. Hello, this is Bob Heil, K9EID. Behind me, I have an ICO 720 transmitter. I have a 722 VFO. We have the 730 modulator and the Mosley CM1 receiver. Now they all have to be connected together with uh, control relays, antenna relays, because they're separate pieces. The original transmitter is a CW transmitter and it had no way, of course, to, <laughs> to work phone. So what ICO did is they took one of their hi-fi amps. They were uh, quite into building very high quality uh, audio amps and they took one of their hi-fi amps, put in a little different output transformer, but it has a pair of EL34 tubes in it. It has gorgeous audio, and, but we had to make all these work together. ICO had it set up. You could plug the modulator into the transmitter, and that worked fine. And instead of using a crystal, so you were just rock bound on one frequency, you could have a VFO. So we're going to show you how we hook all of this together and how it all works. And I must tell you that all of the reports I'm getting have been magnificent. It, it's the best AM signal I've had on the air, maybe in my <laughs> Whole lifetime of uh, 55 years it's a wonderful sounding piece and it's all because of the the uh, 730 modulator so let's go behind and uh, we'll start with the receiver this is a very special uh, part of my my gear it was uh, signed by the designer John Clemens we had a real nice piece with John a few months ago on Ham Nation of how he designed this. But you'll notice that the receiver, of course, has the speaker terminals, has the, um, the uh, antenna terminals, and then it has a ground standby that turns the receiver off when the transmitter turns on. But you have to have a relay to do that. This is the back of the modulator. It's pretty simple. It, uh, it plugs into the wall, 110. And then the connector uh, carries the B plus uh, in and out of the transmitter and the uh, control to turn it on and off. Next is the VFO. And on the back of the VFO, I mounted the dial key relay. We'll come back to this. This is a very integral part of the entire system because this is how we control it all. And this is the transmitter, the antenna, the connector that goes over to the modulator, and the VFO input. If that switch is thrown the other way, it would be the crystal socket on the front. Let's take a look inside. Here's the inside of the transmitter have to have a uh, high voltage that's what the 5u4 tube will do that's a rectifier it takes a high voltage ac from that transformer and turns it into about 350 400 volts dc the transmitter output coils and you can see the various taps on them for the different frequency bands and that's of course changed with the front panel band selector 
Also then on that top chassis, we have the final amplifier, which is a 6146. It's my very favorite. I love 6146s. I've built many projects over my years with the 6146. Now to get drive to that, we have only two tubes. There's really only basically three tubes in this transmitter. We have the, the oscillator back there in the shield. That's a, a 6CL6, that's an oscillator. And it takes the frequency from the VFO and builds it up a little bit and puts it into that 6AQ5, which is used as a buffer. And on the higher bands, it, it's used as a multiplier and then drives the 6146. So it's pretty simple. Now, we take the modulator, and after that happens over here on the other end of the wire, it goes through the modulation transformer. And instead of the B plus coming straight out of that 5U4, it comes over here, and the B plus gets modulated by those wonderful hi fi tubes. EL34s. A lot of expensive hi fi amps use those tubes and they are just wonderful. Very low distortion, great transient response, dynamic range is terrific. And that's just a big hi fi amp, but instead of speakers, it goes over here and drives our great little transmitter. That's basically all it is. Now, to control it, we come out of the antenna and we go into one side the receive side of this dial key this relay it's operated from 110 volts at the bottom of it you'll see on the right angle that's the antenna that goes out to the antenna and then on this side is the receiver so in the relaxed uh, side of that uh, relay that feeds over here and gives the signal to the receiver. Pretty simple. But the Dow Key Relay has been a, a real standard in this industry for all these many, many decades. It's, uh, the relay is uh, shielded inside. Now, those contacts on the outside are for control things. That's what turns the receiver on and off, turns the modulator on and off, and keys up the transmitter. However, I have one other little situation. I wanted to make this push to talk. So what I did is I, I got a hold of a couple of 12 volt relays. I only needed one of them, but I was gonna use the other one for something else. This is a simple 12 volt relay. You could probably get it at Radio Shack. I got it from Gateway Electronics in St. Louis. And what I did there is I had those four separate contacts go over to the mode switch. And instead of having to turn that switch, I now can operate a foot switch. It turns that relay on and those contacts close the same contacts as we have when I do this. You can hear it in the background. And that works great because I don't have to do, I don't like the rotary switches. In fact, this one's in really bad shape. If I use this much, and, and of course you go into tune and then you go into the uh, final. If you did that long, and well, I'd be having troubles because a couple of those contacts are really bad. So now I never have to worry about it. I keep it in the standby mode, and all I have to do is come down here and smash the old foot switch. I love foot switches. Uh, the transmitter's uh, very simple, as as you saw. And it, to tune it is very, very easy. We're going to hit the foot switch. We first get the grid drive where we want it. We'll get that. We want to see about three mils. And so let's get that up where we, okay, three mils of grid drive. Now we're going to go down here to the meter switch. And we're looking at, at, at plate current. We always want to keep the plate current, what we call dipped. That's off resonance. 
And if we keep that off resonance very long, that tube's going to get real red and it will eventually die. Now, we want to increase the load a little bit, get a little more output. You know, increase the load a little, resonate that. Increase the load a little more, resonate that. We don't want to run it off resonance. And let's get it up. I like to see about somewhere around 80 mils. I don't like to get uh, much more than that. And that's going to give us about 45 watts out. And that's it. And of course, we're on 75 meters. We're at 30, 3885. And uh, of course, I've got it into a dummy load right now. But that's all there is uh, to getting it all tuned up. And it, it just makes a, a, a great little transmitter. Uh, this is my microphone gain. And I this is all control. This turns turns the AC on. And this, this control is done with the relay. The, uh, the VFO, that is turned on, on and off with the relay. But what a great setup. I love it. It, it just sounds so good. And I, I have to uh, I have to thank my good friend AI4DQ. I've had this for some time, uh, this setup, but I never had a VFO for it. And Phil said, I've got a VFO, a <laughs> very rare <laughs> a matching VFO for an ICO. <laughs> and not everybody's going to have one of those in their basement. <laughs> <laughs> well, he had one, and I appreciate it because it finally gave me the components we needed. I took it over my great friend W0HRO, the king of uh, restoration and tuning things up. Ken got it all going. I took it down and got the tops all powder coated, and we're in business. So I thought uh, the ICO 720 is a very simple transmitter, as most of the old AM guys were. Uh, as I said, we had we had, we only have three types of tubes. There's the multiply the uh, oscillator is a six CL6, and then there are two six AQ5s. One is kind of a buffer. Uh, it actually actually works as a multiplier on the higher bands. You have a band switch. And the second 6AQ5 is used as a clamp tube that controls the screen grid uh, of the 6146. And that allows us to um, not blow it all up. And it, it actually is the control. Uh, that relay we put in there for push to talk, that's what replaces that switch right there to control the screen of the 6146. And that's the whole circuit right there of the ICO 720. When we put a modulator in the system, if it's just a CW transmitter, this is what happens. It's, as you saw, the 6CL6, the uh, pair of 6AQ5s and the 6146, we have a nice little CW transmitter. But if we want to put that on phone, we have to modulate that final somehow, and we simply do it with a transformer and mic preamp and a driver. This is what the 730 is. And that modulates the DC that the power supply sends to the 6146. That's pretty simple. And it works very well. And you could build it too. <laughs> and look around. You'll find some of these great old vintage pieces. And it's so much fun to put them all together. But that's the whole story on the 720 and the 730. Oh, oh did I have fun good. putting this together? Do you like that, Don? That's awesome. That is incredible. <laughs> Thank you. Great. Wow. I, um, that was I, great, it me up. I loved it. Thank you. I have a, ha, had a lot of time in it, but thanks to, uh, to Phil that I got the VFO, then I could do this. I've had this for a while, and uh, W0HRO got it all going for me. But anyway, it's fun. That's where you'll find me, 3880, 3850. I, I got to say something, a little political move here. Years ago, when the war between AM and sideband happened, I mean, it was a war. Uh, the AMers didn't like the sidebanders, sidebanders didn't like all that kind of, when, they, when it was all AM. And it was a gentleman's agreement. Does everybody understand this? Gentleman's agreement that 3870 
The 3890 is for AM. It wasn't written by the FCC, uh, the league, nobody. It was a gentleman's agreement. And for decades, we all, we all operated beautifully. Go to 3880, 3885. Uh, that's where you see a lot of it today. But it's 3870, the West Coast, East Coast. 3870 to 3890, gentlemen's agreement. What's happened today? A lot of a lot of new new hams that don't know about gentlemen's agreements, and they just pile on the middle of that, and it's really kind of sad. Uh, we work through it, but uh, if you're gonna you're gonna work some AM, that's where it all is. And then 7290 on uh, uh, on uh, 40 meters. Um, I have. My new headset on. This headset has taken two years to get it going. It's shipped this week, and DX Engineering has them. They also have this new, uh, the new PR10. Check it out. I, I, I love, I absolutely love desk stands that have a boom on them. <laughs> and so I built one. Because most of the guys are about this far away from the microphone, and look what happens when you do that. You get up to here, your transient response is there and all that. But look what Stephen, my director of operations, came up with. When you push the push to talk switch, it lights up. Oh, oh I love it. <laughs> and if you just want to do it when you're not there, you can turn it on. But what a marvelous <laughs> microphone. It's, it's, it's really a 781 in a small package. But anyway, that's, uh, that's available now in four different colors. And uh, Amanda and Valerie and all of you wonderful ladies, you finally have a pink one thanks to the uh, owner of this company called Heil Sound. Don, let's uh, hear more about DX Engineering and where you can get all these great new products. Yeah, you was talking about WAR. You know what else they got at DX Engineering? They got WAR at DX Engineering. You can attach that WAR <laughs> to your antenna. That's how we say it down here in Mississippi. And if you haven't heard the news yet, now, class, first off, I want you to get your textbooks out right here. I want you to turn with me to page 56, because we're going to talk about antennas, specifically Bencher, Skyhawk, and the Skylark antennas. If you haven't heard... Uh, DX Engineering has these. They've got the Venture Skyhawk, the Skylark, and the Butternut antennas, all part of the DX Engineering family of manufactured products. That means you get the rugged, high-performance Skyhawk and Skylark Yagis, plus the Butternut world-famous vertical antennas, all with DX Engineering's unmatched, unparalleled quality customer service and tech support. And, of course, DX Engineering has all the repair, add-on, replacement parts for your existing Butternut and Bencher antennas too. Now these Skyhawk and Skylark antennas are pretty special. They're they're probably the best way to get active on the HF bands. Uh, their high performance tri-band uh, Yagi antenna, the Skyhawk, is over 7 dB of gain on 20 and 15, over 9 on 10, and it'll handle full legal limit, 1500 watts without breaking a sweat. Trap free design. It gives you amazing bandwidth. It's it's light, puts less strain on your rotor and your tower. And the Skylark will give you 8 dB of gain on 17 and 12, all with SWR under 1.3 across both bands and a front to back above 20 dB. A lot of rejection there. It also will handle a full gallon. Well, and a half, 1,500, I guess that'd be, you know what I mean. The, the beauty of the, of the antenna designs is that they're simple. There's no moving parts. The aluminum elements, stainless steel hardware are, uh, of course, corrosion resistant. Uh, relatively short boom contributes to a small turning radius which gives them high wind speed ratings, too. Both antennas are computer-optimized. They give you amazing performance. Now let's talk about Butternut and the Butternut Vertical. Multi-band verticals, incredibly easy to install and tune. They have nine-band versions, six-band and dual-band varieties. Uh, several options covering 80 through 6 meters. I want you to go to dxengineering.com and check out these Bencher, Skyhark, and Skylark antennas and the Butternut antennas at DX Engineering. Now, if you get your Skyhawk, Skylark, or Butternut order in by 10 o'clock tonight, Eastern Time, and it's in stock, it'll be on a truck headed your way tonight. Proven products, expert advice, DX Engineering helping you shrink the globe, the world, the, the <laughs> universe that shrinks my head. Request a catalog, shop online 24 hours a day, seven days a week at DX Engineering, or if you're a Beatles fan, eight days a week. DXEngineering.com slash Ham Nation. DX Engineering, thank you so much for your support of Ham Nation. If you don't have this catalog then what's wrong with you i don't want you in the house bob back to you 
<laughs> got some reading to do there. Yeah, that catalog is great. I mean, it brings back lots of uh, often memories of past where we had really great catalogs. Okay, everybody, I had a huge announcement. I mean, huge. Um, <clears throat> guess what I got in the... Uh, it, 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 it's somebody's really pretty ring. And that belongs to Valerie. Congratulations, oh, Valerie wow. and Jerry. Oh, yes. She's going to kill me because I did that probably. But I won't be here for the next few weeks. So I can, you know, she won't. <laughs> she'll probably go down here and find me. But uh, congratulations to you two. What a perfect couple. I just, I'm so, I'm so excited. Sarah and I just talk about it quite often about what a great, uh, great pairing. So I just thought I'd share with, with everyone that um, this is happening. So blessed are both of you. And um, I'm doing a thing on Saturday. If you want to catch up with me on Saturday, I'm doing a radio show here in Springfield. It's on the station KSGF. And you'll look up the gun show. Yes, the gun show. And you can listen to the podcast. Matt Canovi, he's uh, quite a guy. He, and he's there for safety. He does a whole show on safety. Not just guns, but everything. And he has the first half hour of uh, the third hour. He does a three-hour show. It's about ham radio. And in the last few months, we have over 60 people in the Springfield area that have Gordon's books and they got uh, uh, they got together with a little uh, handy talkie thing, and it's sixty. We're just thrilled. They're coming out of the woodwork for ham radio. So if anybody says ham radio's dead, you boys don't know what you're talking about. And you can go up and look at those at the pod, or listen to the podcast. I'm really excited about this. I'm excited because it's bringing ham radio uh, to people that really want to be there but didn't have a place to find out about it, and now they can because of Gordon's books and uh, clubs around here are going crazy trying to uh, get the classes together. So we're we're really Really happy about that. Um, wow. it, it's it's just been wonderful. So, Thanks Gordon, well. I want to thank you. The books are great. So uh, keep up the good work. Uh, look at now, this. <laughs> now, now, Bob, as we are graduating more new ham radio applicants, thanks to uh, the Gordo Books and RNL and all of the ham radio dealers supporting the growth of ham radio. I understand that we have a graduation ceremony about a week yeah. from today. Do you want to elaborate on that, Dr. Heil? <laughs> well, thank you. Yes, on the, I won't be here next week because uh, we are going to, Sarah and I are going to uh, Mizzou. We're going to the UMSL ca uh, campus and they are award, Missouri University is awarding me a doctoral degree, honorary oh, degree oh, in music oh, and technology. So I'm very honored and extremely blessed by this. And as I told them, I wasn't a well-schooled kiddo. I learned it from ham radio. And that's why I try to bring more people into this. Because I know personally some guys that have gotten their license and became great scientists and engineers and so on because of ham radio. Uh, I am one of those, but I really appreciate this award. And uh, Gordo, I don't think you'll have to call me doctor. Uh, Sarah's already told me that if you think I'm going to call you doctor, you've got enough thought coming. <laughs> <laughs> Congratulations, <laughs> Doctor Heil. Well, yeah, thank congrats. you, thank you very much. And we'll, um, I'll be back. Um, uh, I don't know when I'm going to come back because then we're going to uh, uh, the CES show and so on. But I'll be back. But in our in our main meantime, we have Amanda going to hold down the fort along with everybody else. How are you? I'm great, and uh, we've missed you so much, Bob. Nice to have you back on the show. And boy, do I have Thanks. some announcements tonight. Um, I'm sorry. I know we're uh, crunched for time, so I'll I'll run through these really quick. Okay, KC1 CWM new technician and KM4GJU 
new general after going through technician and general at the same time. And K0IKZ, he is a proud husband and proud father right now because his wife, Cheryl, is now KE0BTG and his 13-year-old son, uh, Anthony, is now KE0CEJ. So congrats (laughs) to all of you guys. That's right. Roger. All right. And um, I'm so glad Ray's on tonight. We had the perfect question. And it wasn't addressed to him, but I think that Ray is the perfect guy to answer this. So, uh, Ray, stand by here. KF7WRS Chris would like to know. He says, since we can't hear the fact that everybody tunes up on the frequency that they're about to use, interrupting everybody else, of course, is there a good way to filter out the tone transmitted while others are tuning, or are there radios with specific features to filter these tones? Well, a lot of today's DSP-based radios have an automatic notch filter. Uh, I know on the ones on the ICOMs will handle up to three heterodynes. So three guys close in, tuning up, it'll automatically take that out of the audio for you. But beyond that, if you get a lot of tuner-uppers, it's going to be tough. Yeah, and the the manual uh, uh, DSP notch filter on, on my 7700, if you manually notch somebody out, you don't even see them in the AGC. No effect. No, anything. that's 70 dB of attenuation yeah, on that signal. So it's now. like they, they never even pass by. That's right. That's why I have fallen in love with the 7600 because it's so awesome for, uh, for contesting and everything else. Again, great radio there, Ray. And uh, nice to have you on the show tonight. So let's well, thank, uh, move on thanks, here. Thanks, Amanda. Amanda, aren't you handing out QSOs for W1AW? I am. Actually, Jeff and I have been tag teaming it for the last uh, few nights here. We've been on 40 meters and uh, handing out 17 points. It's been so much fun. You have no idea. And it's too bad we missed you the other night. Well, hopefully George will let me touch the radio and get on the air for the check-ins tonight. <laughs> I will. I will. But but only once. Oh, oh. Okay, you two have to work that out. I, I can't get involved. But um, anyhow, great to see you on here, Ray. And uh, let's see. Um, I've got a question for Gordo. Gordo, will buildings next to a ground-level dipole affect the performance of that dipole antenna? Um, well, the dipole antenna needs to have the feed point up at least for 10 meters, about 15 feet or 20 feet. So... Dipoles need elevation, and the higher you can put up that dipole over the ground, it'll do better than likely a ground plane down at deck level. Very good. Thanks, Gordo, for that answer. And um, for Bob here, we have um, KC9RIJ asked, uh, what was the year of that radio set uh, in your video? The year was 1962, and, and a lot of you saw it for many years and probably didn't know it. It was in the background of the uh, Andy Griffith show, you know, when he's uh, in his police department and he'd pick up the big old microphone. It was plugged into an ICO 720. This was a kit. You, had, you built it. Uh, you built all of this stuff. And uh, uh, that was in the background of the Andy Griffith show, 1962, ICO 720. Wow. Wow. Now that is cool. All right. Thank you, Bob. And Bob, I got to tell you, first of all, like I said, yeah, Jeff and I have been getting QSO points for the Centennial Party um, this year. And last week, Jeff was working, and I'm going to find his call sign here, WA7NRX. And um, he had to send Jeff an email and say, listen, your audio is so fantastic. I absolutely have to know what you're running there so that I can buy the same <laughs> setup. Isn't that the coolest well, thing? Set- What's yeah, that? 7600. You dialed up a little EQ in a 7600 and it sounds great. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> oh, yeah. No, yeah. Jeff definitely waxed poetic about the high on microphone and um, also the mixer and just said, listen, uh, we put everything and we uh, worked on it and we asked for input and uh, we, we tried and failed several times on getting the audio right until uh, people would listen and tell us what to adjust. So, Hey, it's a good mixture. Uh, I'm, we're really thrilled with it. Of course, it's hard when you have a lady's voice and a male's voice. Uh, it doesn't always um, combine the same. You have to make a few adjustments here and there. But I, I just had to throw that in there, Bob, because um, we're so proud of what you do. Thank you. Thank and um, thank you. 
Let's see. Uh, other than that, oh, yes, I do have one more question for Gordo. Gordo, so a lot of times you're on HF and you're hearing a lot of QRM or maybe intentional interrupting, things like that. What are your thoughts about how the FCC is handling that? Um, are they doing a good job? Are they taking care of business? Well, I think the FCC is so overloaded uh, uh, with uh, interference complaints from other radio services that we are not right in their main observation post. But the many hams that are members of the official observer and ARRL program that send out the reminder cards, let those uh, intentional operators know that we know who maybe they are, but more important, the accidental operator that uh, is causing interference uh, 2KC away that uh, they may want to uh, exercise good engineering practice and go at least three or four KC away. So I think we need to police our own. The FCC is so busy with so many other matters that the ham service is ours and we need to do our own cleanup. And what I do is I make no mention if we have interference and I'll say, hey, let's move up five kilohertz. And that way we get rid of the interference. We never acknowledge that we're being interfered with and uh, we move on. That's that's a great idea. And uh, that's usually what I do. Uh, if you acknowledge them, you're just encouraging them. So, all right. Thanks for that. And um, other than that, you guys, I don't have anything else. Uh, great show tonight. Uh, great presentation. So uh, glad all of you guys could be here. Uh, back to you, Bob. Well, thanks, Amanda. And I know we went uh, long tonight. It was my fault because I, I wanted to do the video and, and George had good stuff. Don had good stuff. Gordo always has good stuff. And so uh, we, we're uh, very appreciative of, of the, the crew back in Petaluma at TWIT. And thanks to Leo for allowing us to have the bandwidth and the time. So we're going to... Uh, close things down but in doing so we must wish everyone a very merry christmas because we will be dark for the next two weeks because of christmas and new year's eve so uh, uh, enjoy your families enjoy the time um, be sure and and, and pass amateur radio on to your friends by letting them come in and watch and listen to ham nation i want to tell you that every week I personally get several emails, and I know George and Rand, uh, and uh, uh, Randy AGE has mentioned it, and of course, Gordo and Don, we get emails from you about, wow, I got interested in ham radio after watching your program. We love it. And so that's what it's all about is sharing this great hobby. It's, uh, it's, it's just a fascinating place to be in life, and we hope that you join us all. And I hope you join us all tonight on 3847. I, I have not heard. Uh, George, do you have the 40-meter frequency set uh, as yet? Anybody know? I am not positive about the frequency, Bob. I think it's going to be around uh, 7.268. 20 meters, I don't believe we're going to have a net because it looks like the 20-meter band is closed down tonight. Uh, Echo Link, Star 2, Drop in Star, no number 355-800. Now, I know I'm going to get Ray over here on the D-Star network, uh, Reflector 14, Module C. And I, I've got one question before we go, Bob. And by the way, we'll be back next week. You won't be with us, but uh, uh, I'll be here and Don and Gordo and I believe Dale. And uh, we're, we're, I guess we'll have the Christmas episode then. And then, then we'll be out the week of Christmas and the week of New Year's. Um, oh, and congratulations, too, by the way. That was a great honor. Uh, Gordo beat oh, me yeah. to the punch on congratulating you on that one. But on the, uh, the PR-22 I'm going to give away here, you know, I asked for questions in the chat room, and, man, there were a lot of them in there. But the one I picked out, and I, I picked it out because it tied most with this mic, and that is what is the main advantage of a corridor microphone? So if you know the main advantage of a cardioid microphone, send your answer to me, hamnationcontest at gmail.com, and you may win this high PR-22. Bob? Right on. Yeah. It's a lovely microphone. I designed that microphone at the best of Paul Rogers. Bad. He wanted a microphone that cut through the mix, so it's got a little bit of a rise in the mid-range, more than any other microphone on the planet. And that's why we like it here, uh, because it, you don't have to EQ it, and it's great on ham radio. Well, thanks, everybody. 
And uh, yes, I won't be here next week, but then we'll be dark for two weeks and we'll all be back in January and have a great time here on Ham Nation. But until then, why, 7-3, best regards to all. And I appreciate all the comments and so on. And we'll talk to you down the line. Little high, little low, AM, FM, sideband. We'll, we'll be there. Thanks a lot. Enjoy your hobby and enjoy life. So long for now. 73. Good night, everyone. <laughs>